Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve, otherwise known as Pin, and today we're going to take a look at the Aegis Redeemer. Now, I am quietly working away on my Idris video. It's taking a bit longer than I would like. Um, a bit more complex than I thought it was going to be, which is fine, but that's going to be coming out soon, hopefully. In the meantime, I thought it was only right that we take a look at the Aegis Redeemer. This ship is an absolute weapon built for purpose the purpose to hurt ships and hurt ships it does very well it is an absolute beast this thing um especially if you play in small groups on star citizen um to use the full potential of this ship this thing is absolutely devastating not only does it look kick ass it literally kicks ass especially when manned um I love the look of this ship, I love the engines, the nacelles, everything about this ship is very, very cool indeed. The detailing on this model is exquisite. There's a lot of detail um, that you might just brush past that I've sort of picked up on and gone, my god, this ship is epic. So, the Aegis Redeemer then. Something that I would highly recommend if you play in small groups. It is definitely more effective manned. Not to say that you can't go out and hurt things as a solo pilot, because you most certainly can. But to utilise the full potential of this, I would say you need a minimum crew of three. Um, and we've been having a blast, you know. This thing is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And as you can see, it is quite literally dripping in turrets. So we have the top turret which I replaced the Gatling guns for two attrition size 5 weapons, which are nice. I did have um, some Galderines on the lower turret, and I crashed and lost those, but it's got the stock size 5 Gatling, so you can see what they uh, look like, and they are beastly. We also get a Chin turret, which can be operated by a separate crew member and or slaved to the pilot. So the pilot will have two fixed size 4 hard points, as you can see in the wings there, and that chin turret at his disposal which is very nice indeed and nestled away towards the rear of the ship and this glorious glorious engine designs and the nacelles we have a rear turret nestled underneath this turret will slide forwards when in operation um, to a pivot point below the tail giving the rear gunner a very actually very nice 360 well 360-ish view of uh, the rear of the ship. Um, very nice place to sit. Although, to be honest, you won't be doing much in that rear turret because not many things survive a head-on attack against a Redeemer. So here we have the landing gear. And I wanted to sort of highlight the detail here. It's a tricycle landing gear. But look at the cabling and look at the individual stitching around the tyres. That is exquisite modelling in my eyes. When I saw that and really looked at it I thought my god it's awesome it's awesome now when it comes to the cockpit it's very reminiscent of modern day attack helicopters in my mind um, very sleek edgy menacing uh, sort of attack helicopter vibe to it very sort of Apache menacing evil look to it the visibility is actually very good um, for the pilot um, so not only does it look very cool, it is actually pretty effective sitting there. Not many blind spots at all. Of course, the huge size 4 hard points here. I've got two attrition 4s on there. Um, and when I've got the chin turret at my disposal as well, which is size 3. That's adequate firepower to solo. But really, you want this ship to be manned. Here we have the detailing of the engine. We have a ramp which shares its design from the Vanguard. So if you're familiar with that, you will recognise the ramp. So overall, I have been having a blast with this thing. Uh, when you go out with your buddies, your battle buddies, this thing is nearly unstoppable. Um, you do not want to bump into one of these if it is manned. That is for sure. It comes with some excellent components. I only changed the shields. I have felt no, nearly, uh, no need to change any of the other components um, except for the weaponry, to be honest. The speed is very good for its size. It's, it's got super acceleration and arguably some of the best air brakes in the game. This thing stops rapidly. Rapidly indeed. So what we're going to do now 
is take a look at how it performs in a combat situation. So here we are taking on a hammerhead. I've got a crew. I think we're fully crewed in this particular clip. Um, and we just chew up this hammerhead. It has no answer. This is a Corvette ship getting beaten up by the Redeemer, which has been coined as being a mini hammerhead. I tend to agree with that statement. And he is about to go skadoosh in a minute. And he's done. Thanks for coming. But look at the firepower. It's insane, this ship. Lots of fun to be had when you crew this ship. So what we will do now, guys, is we will now venture in to the ship and have a little tour. Okay, here we go. So this is the ramp. We're on our way in. The ramp, of course, the same as the vanguards. So we'll enter the lower deck to close the ramp. With this button on the left. And it's a nice speedy ramp, which is cool. Paint scheme. Sort of a khaki green and yellow in here, which adds to that sort of military vibe, which I really enjoy. On the left of the ship here, two... Um, space for two SCU. Ideally for me, I would like to have one SCU of medical supplies and one SCU of ammunition for if we wanted to do uh, a little dropping run, dropship run, we can. We have adjacent to that on the opposite side, we have a walk-in shower toilet area. Nicely concealed. the toilet will pop out there on the left on the bottom so not the most pretty but very practical um, we also have some wardrobes for the crew to store armor and clothes and whatever else you might need which is nice which work we also have underneath these we have our storage bins which brings you to your inventory so you can transfer things to and from the ship which is nice and again it's exactly the same on the other side So all good stuff there. We also have four beds, which double up as escape pods, which is nice. So when we need to run away bravely, we can do so, which shouldn't be too often in a ship like this, to be honest. So that's nice. We can log out as well using these beds. And again, another two wardrobes. We have a sort of kitchen area. We have a drinks, coffee maker and a food machine here. Uh, a countertop and then we have a fridge um, which comes sometimes when it works it's stocked with water and basic food even ration packs I've had spawn in there so that's nice so this is deck one of the ship we sort of I would say habitation but not really kind of then we move up to the second deck and you can see straight away we have four seats here but we'll make our way to the rear and then come back. So a hell of a lot of space in here um, to make way for all of these rather large components. So we have the QT drive nestled right at the back. Now what I like about this area of the ship is it is very roomy and when we get to the point where we need to interchange and repair these modules, these components, I mean, look at the size of them. There is going to be plenty of room in here to sort of negotiate that and fix these things, providing they don't all go wrong at once. But I do like it's very easy access and easy to get to. We even have a keypad on this particular component. How cool is that? I guess that's going to be a thing. I hope it is. So the components, it's like a dedicated component room. Now there is... Um, access to the rear turret here as well. These are batteries. I don't think we quite have these yet. Yep, this one doesn't open. Shield generators as well. Let's take a look at these. Two of them nestled in there. That looks cool. That looks so cool. 
those would be the tricky ones, I think, to get those out and work on them. And we have the turret. So let's get in the top turret so I can show you what the view is like in the top turret of the Redeemer. Two attrition fives, very, very powerful weapons. Just got to try and remember where the on button is. Which I believe... Oh, hang on, it's down here somewhere, I'm sure it is. Yeah, okay, there it is, there it is, I saw it. So when we power these up, we do get a very nice 360 until we sort of get towards the rear of the ship, the guns will point up, obviously you don't want to shoot your own tail off, and then they will dip, uh, dip back down. So we have a fairly good view towards the front and sides of the ship. So when we get to the rear, we'll have to re um, rely on our rear turret gunner. Um, if the ship that's attacking us makes it that far. So that's the top turret. That's how we get in and out the top turret. Cool. So cool. Ridiculously cool. So now we will open this door. And as you can see, we've got four seats here as well. I kind of like the idea of these seats as like a mini drops, uh, drop ship as well. So you could have like a recce team sitting here. Okay, you could drop these guys off and then do a, a cap around wherever you're trying to recon. Um, so definitely excitement to be had with a mini drop ship. You can have an elite team of crack troops, a recce team. We have um, weapon rack here as well, which is nice. So the ship, when fully crewed, can take about six people at all the stations, plus four with these seats and plus four with the beds. So you could get more than six in there, but you might not have access to your escape pods. You can, you can have um, some people laying down in the beds, four people in the seats, and then the rear turret top turret, the bottom turret, and then the three seats up front. We have the gravity generator. It's not opening yet. We make our way down to sort of the engineering area of the ship and look at the details here. That's cool. I mean, who doesn't like RGB lights in their ship, right? So we have our various workstations and stuff here and we can, of course, enter the... Um, belly turret. So let's get into the lower turret. The first thing you'll see is the chin turret of the pilot's firing station. But again, fairly decent coverage until we get towards the back of the ship then we sort of pivot down but the turrets are nice and responsive fairly quick on their radius of turning and they point forwards very nicely and I do have the Galdarines there with 2600 rounds each so that's plenty, not Galdarine, sorry, the ballistic guns that come with this, the, the stock variant. Does come stock with a lot of ballistic cannons, um, mini guns, which is nice. Let me move to sort of the neck of the ship. Um, so these are the two remote stations, and again, the detailing is ridiculous. There's just the floor, the writing, Aegis logos, the seats are stitched with the Aegis logo in the head cushion, all these little touches. It's just great. So, the rear turret, we hop in, screen unfolds, which is nice. We can access some of the ship's um, component, the triangle for the usage of power and stuff, and then we have the rear turret, now that is not a bad place to sit and have a look. Look at this. 
awesome. However, like I said, um, if you are the rear gunner of this, don't expect to see too much action unless you're PvPing, right? Um, if you're out fighting the AI, you are going to be twiddling your thumbs more often than not. So that's the rear turret, and then this seat on the left here will be the chin turret. So let's hop in this, enter remote turret. Now, I'm not sure I like, I mean it's nice, don't get me wrong, I could have an extra person doing this for me, but as the pilot I would want to keep these guns for myself, um, to be honest. Just, uh, um, just for a bit more funsies, but it's not really an issue, um, I don't think it's really an issue. As long as the Redeemer is working at its full potential and massacring everything it comes across, then what's the problem? Um, but the pilot could swap out maybe those size 4 hard points for size 3 gimbaled. So you could have 4 size 3 gimbaled if you prefer that. I like just running six um, fixed and just head on everything and murdering everything in my path. Here, we can adjust the mood of the ship. Look at this. We have different lighting effects. How I am so easily amused, you know, it's cool. So with the lights off, then we have on, and then we have like that moody blue, which is cool. So the ship, although it looks, I know it's big, but in the interior, the inside for me looks a lot bigger than you would think it is, right? With the two separate decks, the corridors are actually quite long. We have an extinguisher here, should things start catching fire, hopefully we never get to a point where that's a thing um, when we're flying this ship. We have another storage um, for avionics, all these components here. Let's close that and then we will take a seat in the cockpit. What a great place to sit. All the usual MFDs and stuff at your disposal. We have a little viewport at the bottom so you can see how close you are to your to the ground when you're landing. Very nice. But definitely has that attack helicopter um, vibe to it. So guys, that was my short video on the Redeemer. I love this thing. I definitely have a lot of fun when I have my buddies on board and we just go out wrecking stuff. This thing is uh, certainly... A very cool ship to own but do you own one I want to hear from you what do you think of the Redeemer a little bit OP or not particularly useful do you run solo all the time you know what are your thoughts on this ship I love this ship very much I've had a lot of fun with it um, yeah so I'm kind of intrigued to what you guys think of it um, think about it your thoughts on it how you've improved it have you swapped the weapons etc as always i look forward to hearing from you so that's going to wrap this video up guys and i will have more star citizen content en route to your location very soon cheers